Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on MBA program offered by Pepperdine University. This is Gurpreet here from Siksha Study Abroad and I have Mr. Travis from Pepperdine University who will be answering all your queries related to studying MBA program from Pepperdine University. A little housekeeping before we go live. You can drop in your question in the question box section of your go to webinar panel. We'll start off with the presentation. Over to you Mr. Travis. All right. Hello, everyone. And I would like to say good morning to you from Los Angeles, California. I know it is evening for you, but it is the morning for me. It's 7.30 a.m. here on a nice, bright Friday morning. And so as you can see this picture of Pepperdine Grazadillo Business School, this is an example of what it looks like from the sky when you're looking down at Pepperdine. We are right next to the Pacific Ocean, and we would love to welcome you one day to our school, Grasadio Business School at Pepperdine University. So just a quick, uh, a quick outline of what we will discuss today. Uh, I will give you a little bit more information about me. We will talk about the advantage of attending Pepperdine University. We will be discussing our full-time MBA programs today. We do have other graduate business options. We do have master's of science degrees, but today we will talk about the MBA program. Uh, we will go into a little bit of what career support that you will get from our career uh, professional development team. We will talk about our application and the things that you would need to submit a successful application at Pepperdine University. And then we will go into some next steps uh, like it was mentioned earlier, uh, when you have questions, please type them in, and I hope that I can address as many questions as I can in the time provided today. So just a little information about myself. I am recruitment manager for full-time programs in the business school. My primary focus is on domestic MBA students, uh, so normally I do not recruit out of uh, outside of India, even though we do as a school. But the good thing for you is whenever you have any questions about applying to the full-time MBA, uh, you, can, you can reach out to myself or I have a colleague named April. You can reach out to her as well. And you will see more information. You see my email address here, and we will see, you will see the other email address at the end of the presentation if you have any questions regarding anything that you hear on this presentation. So let's talk about the Pepperdine Advantage. Why would you come all the way from India to come to, to come to the United States to get an education? And on top of that, why would you come to Pepperdine? Uh, some of the big things about us is our location. We are located near Los Angeles, California. Uh, we are exactly located in Malibu, which is along the Pacific Ocean. Uh, not within Los Angeles County. And so the location gives you a great opportunity to get involved in various business opportunities within our area, uh, especially with our proximity to Los Angeles and the Bay Area, which is uh, about a four-hour drive north or a short plane ride north. The mission of Pepperdine Grazadillo Business School um, is a simple one. Uh, we are inspired by our Christian values uh, on which Pepperdine University was founded on. And so at, at Grazadillo Business School, we seek to promote transform transformational learning, we seek to create applied knowledge, and we seek to equip our students to become best for the world, business leaders and entrepreneurs. And as part of our mission, we, we, pre we present applied and relevant learning. So you will be learning real-world solutions to issues that are happening in the world today, and we want to give you applied learning that you can use at, at, your, at your workplace as early as the next day. A big advantage to attending uh, business school at Pepperdine is we have small classes. And our small class size allows you to get that personalized attention not only from our professors, 
but also from other staff members that are involved where you're getting one-on-one attention. And then we have a value-centered focus. And the, vote, the, folk, the values that we focus on are integrity, courage with compassion, having a pioneering spirit. And one of our main values is something that our founder, George Grazadillo, had mentioned. Uh, today, and he would always say, today, not tomorrow. And that means we want our students to deliver on the good today and not wait for a time when conditions are more favorable for you. Be ready to deliver on the good when you, when, as soon as you can. So here you see a list of the MBA programs that we offer. And for, as far as you are concerned, every program that you see listed except the last one is, is something that you can apply to. The, the last one on this chart you see is for our five-year Bachelor of Science and MBA joint degree program. This option is only available for our undergraduate students at Pepperdine University already. So if you do not have a bachelor's degree and you're seeking to get a bachelor's degree, you would need to uh, attend school at Pepperdine University as an undergraduate student first. And then the five-year Bachelor of Science MBA could be an option for you. But I'm, as, if I, as I assume that I'm speaking to students who are to prospects who have a bachelor's degree, then you're looking at every, every other option on this page. The most common MBA option is the 20-month MBA. It is a two-year program, so that means there's four terms or semesters, whatever you would like to call it, and there is a summer internship involved with the 20-month MBA. This is the most common MBA option at Pepperdine and any other business schools in the United States. You do need to have work experience at least one year, even though many of our students have at least four to five years of work experience in this program. The GMAT or the GRE is required for the 20-month MBA. For our 15-month MBA, this is an accelerated program because even though there are four terms of classes, they will happen consecutively, which means classes in the fall, classes in the spring, classes in the summer, and then your final term will be in the fall, so you would graduate earlier than the 20-month MBA students. Since it is accelerated and there's no internship opportunity for 15-month MBA, you need to have more work experience. And again, the GMAT or the GRE is required. The 12-month MBA program uh, is, is shorter. It's, it's three terms, three consecutive terms, fall, spring, and summer. Uh, what we ask is for students who are applying for the 12-month MBA, they must have a bachelor's degree in business. So what that means is for our other MBA programs, it doesn't matter what you got your what you have your bachelor's degree in as long as you have one. But for the 12 month MBA, because of the nature of the, of the program, having a bachelor's in business is required. And again, many students have more work experience for the 12 month MBA program. So if you say you have at least 3 years of work experience, you have a bachelor's degree in business, how can you help the figure out whether or not a 12-month MBA is the better fit for you. And that's a conversation you can have with myself or my team here at Pepperdine. But a quick thing I would tell you is that if you are not working currently in a business field, the 12-month MBA is not going to be the program for you. If you are currently working in a business field and all you really want to do is get a promotion within that same company or in that same field and you know that getting an MBA will get you that get you that uh promotion and get you the opportunity to move up within a company you want to do the 12 month MBA the international MBA option is very similar to the 20 month MBA and the highlight for that is it all it, it it's programming in that in international MBA allows for a studying abroad. That may or may not be um, something that interests you, especially if you're already coming from outside the United States, but it is an option for you. 
we do have study abroad programs where you can study for one one term or you can study abroad for one week. And our one week study abroad programs are very popular. The next two are joint degree options. Uh, so if you're thinking about getting a law degree, you can you can apply to the Pepperdine School of Law and apply to our Grazadio Business School and, and finish both degrees in four years. You would need to take the GMAT and you would need to take uh, the law school admissions test. We also have our MBA and our Masters of Public Policy joint degree. And again, you would apply to the School of Public Policy. You must be admitted to the School of Public Policy and complete all of its requirements for the application as well as all of the requirements for the MBA application. So these are your options that we have for full-time MBA. We also Travis, have... We have... Great. Uh, Travis, we have a few students who want to know more about the average GMAT or GRE score uh, that is required for the MBA program? That's a great question, and I will get into that a little bit more. Um, I did, we don't really have a required, uh, you said GMAT and GPA, or just GPA? GMAT and GRE. OK, good. So we don't have required, like a required um, GMAT or GRE uh, score that you must have, but I can say if you wish to be admitted, what those scores are. And so admitted students to our program have averaged at least a 640 on the GMAT. And for the GRE, they have scored at least 155 to 160 on both the verbal and the quantitative sections of the GRE. And so that's what we've seen from our admitted students. Now, that just, if you if you don't have a 640, that does not mean that you're not going to get into get into our school, but that's just an average of what our admitted students have had. All right. So as we continue, here's just a short list of the elective concentrations that we offer. We do have seven concentrations where you can focus in within your full-time MBA degree. Now, if you're thinking about the 12-month MBA option, you will not to, you will not be able to choose from this list, you will only be able to have finance or marketing because of the, the small, the accelerated nature of the program. But for the 15-month, 20-month, and all of our other options, you are eligible to choose from any of these concentrations. The most common concentrations at Pepperdine or any other business school will be finance and marketing. Uh, those are the foundations of, I would say, any MBA program because you will get class, you, your core classes will come from, will have a lot of finance and marketing expertise. But then you can also choose from applied analytics, which is also a master's degree option at our, at our school. Digital innovation and information systems, which is more tech related. Dispute resolution, where you're working with the School of Law's dispute resolution program, which is, is the top ranked dispute resolution program in our country. It is number one in the United States. Entrepreneurship, uh, and we do entrepreneurship differently than a lot of schools in the, in the United States. And so we have a very interesting entrepreneurship program where we focus on creativity as opposed to feasibility. And then leadership and managing organizational change, which is more of a Pepperdine uh, unique concentration. So let's go into what career support looks like. And so with working with our Career Management Center, which is now called our Center for Career Professional Development, you, you will have opportunity to participate in interactive, expert-supported live sessions and also get that one-on-one -on -one individual coaching that you want. And so what you see here, of course, the middle, the middle picture that you see is the staff that you would work with, uh, in particular the man, uh, the second from the left, his name is John. John will be one of your main uh, MBA career advisors that you would have. But as you can see with the pictures here, there are individual sessions where you're working with alumni. We, we host workshops on campus. 
where you get to speak to alumni and current students who are where, and where they've done internships. And all, but we bring many of our alumni back who are working at some of the top companies in the area, and they they tell you what their company is looking for and a day in the life of whatever they're working on. So if they are if they are a brand manager, you get to hear about a day in the life of a brand manager. And so that's what many of these pitches that you see are about. And on the next slide, you get to see a, a variety of companies that we have connections with and where our alumni are. And so we, we work with these companies to host networking events both on campus but also at their locations, at their headquarters, in in Southern California or anywhere, uh, we we took students to Microsoft in Seattle, Washington. We took them there. We also took students to Amazon. There's an Amazon headquarters in Seattle, Washington as well. Uh, they're looking to adding an Amazon headquarters possibly in Los Angeles within the next three years. And so there are options for you to take these treks to companies to learn more about them on site, but. For those such as a 20th Century Fox, because, of course, Los Angeles is an entertainment hub, we do have opportunities for you to visit them on site or they will come to our campus as well. And here you see where most or many of our alumni are. So these are some of uh, the companies that are hiring Pepperdine alumni the most. Um, and as you see at the, at the, the top three, that are listed there. We send many students to Bank of America, and their headquarters are in North Carolina, but they do have locations in Los Angeles, and many of our students go there to do uh, rotational, uh, rotations once they earn their MBA. AT&T hosts a case competition on our campus every year, and so we work with them a lot. But you can see a list of the other companies where many of our alumni are higher, um, you know, of note, you can see the Walt Disney Company, which is their headquarters are not far from Pepperdine. And of course, Pepperdine University, many alumni do find opportunities to work here. Um, you know, whether it's in the human resources team, I've, I saw an alum, an alum yesterday uh, working at the business school at one of our locations in, in West LA. So there are opportunities for you to find work here. And many of our alumni do stay on in Southern California and find opportunities for work. And so this slide here, I wanted to show you what the demand is for business school talent. And so there are several degrees here listed, master's degrees, some of which we offer at Pepperdine, such as an applied finance degree, such as a master's in applied analytics. And But as you can see, uh, with G GMAC, the company that administers the GMAC exam, they they surveyed corporate recruiters in our country, and 79% of them are recruiting specifically for students who have an MBA. And so this is why, one of the reasons why getting an MBA is important, because you're going to be in demand all across the world, especially here in the United States. And so here, you know, we have a nice, nice little picture of someone trying to decide where they would like to go because with an MBA, you're never locked into a single career path. The skills, the knowledge, and the credibility that you gain with an MBA can be applied in a variety of industries, whether they are government, private, public, for-profit, non-profit, it doesn't matter. MBA, uh, students with an MBA can work in any industry within any functional area, and that's because the MBA is a broad degree. Unlike some of the master's programs that you would see, the MBA, the MBA will touch, it's not, it's not going to focus just on finance. It's not going to focus just on accounting. You're going to take classes and, and learn on topics, on a variety of, of topics within the MBA. So, even if whether you choose one of the seven concentrations or you don't even have to choose a concentration, you can continue to just mix and match your, your classes so that you have a more broader knowledge 
so that when you get your MBA, you can go into any field you want. And, you, and we have them listed here. Many of our students do uh, pursue opportunities within energy, technology, consulting, financial services, and so on and so forth. And in California, of course, media and entertainment is big. But again, you can, you can go and get an MBA, work at a company for a couple of years, and then you can switch course. And having an MBA will allow you to do that easily. All right. So I don't know if there's any other questions before I jump into what the Pepperdine application looks like, but if they're not, I will keep going. We have a few students who want to know about the fee structure of the program. Say that again, the which program? Fee structure of the MBA program. Hmm. I'm not sure if I understand that question. Travis, we have few students who want to know more about the fee structure of the MBA program. The features? Fee structure. Fee. Oh, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to all of that in, in, the, in the next couple of slides. So I guess I will keep moving so I can get to that quickly. So what we see here, and I'm going to go, I'm going to, with the time remaining, I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit so I can get to more questions at the end. But here's what you will see in pretty much any business school application, but also what you will see in, in our application for Pepperdine. And so I will go through each of these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these lists uh individually so that we can talk more about them so starting with the application if you're applying to the mba program at pepperdine it is electronic we do not accept paper copies so even if you go online and you try to print it out and send it to us via email that will not be accepted you must submit your application electronically there is an application fee that is uh that is part of that and that's uh, 150 us dollars uh, it, it is subject to go to increase at any time, but today it is $150. Um, there are uh, accompanying documents that we will discuss in here, but one thing to note is that we do not require letters of recommendation. It is an you know, it we have we have had students who have offered to submit a letter of recommendation uh, because they already had one ready. Some you know, uh, I guess a supervisor or someone they worked with was willing to write them a letter of recommendation, but it is not required. I am not on the admission committee, so I'm not sure how they even look at letters that are submitted since it's not a required part of the application. And there's nowhere in the application for you to upload that letter of recommendation. And so that's something to keep in mind. It's not something if you don't, that's one less thing you need to worry about when you're applying to Pepperdine. Now, we do not require admission interviews as well, but this is something that you can you can request, uh, and that's something you could ask uh, my team if you would like to be interviewed um, after you submit your application. And I look at the interview as another way to add some additional information to your file that you did not address within the application. So when it comes to essays, we only have two, we only have one required essay, and we mainly want to know what are your short-term short career plans and how will this degree help you reach your long-term goals. And so you should be able to answer that within one page. The optional essay is there for you to address to bring up any additional information that you feel is necessary for your file. And I like to say, when I think of examples of what to address, if you had some extenuating circumstances while you were studying for your bachelor's degree, you, this is something you want to mention. If you had to take a year off because you had to take care of someone who was sick in your family or if someone passed away, unfortunately, and it affected what you were able to do at work or, or at, at school, that's a perfect thing to address in the application because when – the admissions committee sees that you had a you had a semester of classes where you did not do well, you had a lot of C's, maybe a couple of D's, or or you did not score you did not score highly as you would like to. That's something you want to address. 
or if there's gaps in your work experience, that's something you want to address. But again, that's an optional essay. So if you don't have any of that, you do not need to submit anything for the optional essay. When it comes to submitting a successful resume, uh, first, you, you know, the, uh, the resume can be uploaded to the electronic application. I would say check for errors. Make sure that, you know, someone looks over your resume and make sure that you have, you know, you don't have anything misspelled. Um, make sure that things make sense, that it's easily read. I would say include all relevant experiences that, that you feel you can, that, that you feel have helped you on your path to hopefully earning an MBA. Keep your resume brief. And what I mean by brief is many, many, many schools and companies in the United States don't like more than a one-page resume. And especially if you, if, now, if you have a lot of work experience, if you have several years of work experience, completing, comp doing a, uh, having a, a resume that's over one page can be helpful just to include all of your accomplishments. I know when I'm, when I'm doing my resume, it's hard for me to keep it down to one page, but it's not two pages. It's not two full pages. You know, it's, but make sure that's one thing to keep in mind. Pay attention to the parameters. Some, some, some schools might say one-page resume, so you need to do what you can to make it one page, but not be obnoxious about it. So don't use, if you're using, you know, any kind of word processing uh, system, don't, don't, have, don't use a size 8 font just so that you can get everything on one page. And don't have where every, every centimeter of your, of your page is, has a letter on it just because you want to keep everything on one page. So be presentable, have your resume presentable, and have some, again, when it comes to your resume or any part of your application, have someone else look at it so that they can give you pointers as well. So what have I seen on the resumes of successful applicants? They talk about their accomplishments. So don't just talk about your responsibilities. You know, if you, if you work at a fast food company, I know that you, that, you flip, that you may flip burgers and you may work the cashier. <laughs> I understand that. Talk about something else. Talk about, you know, any strategies that you brought to your company that, that resulted in an increase in business. If an in, you know, and mention that in percentages. You know, I presented this strategy that this new work strategy that resulted in a 50% increase over the last two years. That's an example of something that you would want to show in your resume because then that's showing that's showing the business school, that's showing the admissions committee that you can produce. And that's what they want to say. Work experience. We talked about the work experience a little bit with the, with, with when, I listed, when I listed the MBA options. And so what we're looking for when we say work experience is professional work experience, um, and I mean, for me, work, professional work experience is really any, any work experience you have beyond your bachelor's degree. And so Pepperdine Graduate Business School at this time does not really consider internships. If you feel that that's something relevant that you may have, that you may have learned something from, if, you want, if that's on your resume, okay. But when we say, for instance, that for the 15-month MBA program, we're looking for three years of work experience. We're saying three years beyond your bachelor's degree. We're not going to count that three, four, five months that you were completing an internship. So I, that, that, that needs to be said. Now, Hello, Travis, we can't hear you. Travis, are you there? Oh. 
Hello, everyone. Somehow I was temporarily disconnected by phone, so I apologize. I am back. And as I was saying, when we talk about work experience, this is we're looking for a professional work experience. At least uh, many of our students have at least four, year, four to five years, but that does not mean that you will not be admitted if you have less than that. How relevant should your work experience be? That the, the real answer to that question is you do not have to have business-related work experience to be admitted to an MBA program. If you do have business-related work experience, it definitely helps. But don't fret if you're not working at a financial services company, if you're not working at a bank. That doesn't matter. But we do want to see that you have professional work experience beyond your bachelor's degree. We have we, many teachers uh, apply to the MBA programs and get accepted. So if you're a teacher and you want your MBA, you, you can do it here. Moving on, GMAT GRE. We talked about, I did say, I did mention earlier what the, you know, our average scores for admitted students. Uh, so important thing to know, GMAT or GRE needs to be taken in the last five years. If you've taken, and that's as of today. So if you've taken uh, the GMAT or the GE before, uh, before April 20th of 2013, your score is invalid and you need to take a new one. Uh, we do have opportunities on our website where you can do test prep, and that includes uh, a mini exam, a practice exam that GMAT gave to us. And so you can find that on our website so that you can get a sample of what goes into uh, preparing for the GMAT exam. We do not have something like that for the GRE, uh, but you know, I think if you even do the, the mini exam through the GMAT, it gives you an opportunity to understand. One quick question that, that students ask me, does it matter which one, which test between GMAT or GRE? The answer is it does not matter. Either test is accepted. The GMAT exam is was specifically designed for business school, but business schools across the United States accept either the GMAT or the GRE. Um, I answered this question when I was talking about the average scores. Can you be admitted with lower than average test scores? The answer is yes. When it comes to admission, our committee looks at everything. They're looking at your GMAT or your GRE score looking at work experience, they're looking at your academic performance in, in undergraduate. These are the things that they're looking at. How many times can you retake the test to improve your score? I don't think it's wrong to, you know, if you're, you know, give yourself time to prepare for the test. You know, taking it three times every, you know, a year or three times within a year is not unreasonable. Uh, the G, GMAT will allow you to take to retake that test, I think within 30 days. But if you're trying to prepare, if you're trying to increase your score, I would recommend, you know, giving yourself a little bit more time so that you can study and see where you can increase your score so that you can be more prepared for that. All right. So English proficiency. So if you have earned your undergraduate degree in a language other than English, you will need to take the TOEFL or the IELTS. Uh, our average TOEFL score is 100, and our average IELTS score is 6.5 band. So if you are, let's say if, if anyone who is, who, I'm, who is on this webinar who earns your bachelor's degree in the United States, you do not need to take the TOEFL. And I would say if you are, if you are, if you studied in India and your and your your language was in English, I would I would recommend that you prepare a that you prepare a letter or get a letter from your university stating such. So that will because sometimes our, our I will be honest, our committee may see that you earned your degree outside the United States and will assume that you did not get it in English. So having having a statement from the school or a letter saying that, and it may be on your transcript, but having it where it says, 
instruction was given in English will be a lot helpful for your application processing. So the important thing to know about transcripts is if you have an unofficial transcript, and what I mean by unofficial is you, even if it's an official transcript from your school, if it was in an envelope, you opened it, and you're looking at it, it's considered unofficial. An official transcript would be sent directly from the school in an unsealed or in a sealed and unopened envelope. And that can either be sent directly to the Office of Admission at Pepperdine, or they can give it to you in an envelope, and you send it to Pepperdine, but it cannot be opened. That's what an official transcript looks like. And so while that transcript must be mailed to the admission office in a sealed envelope, you can, you can upload your unofficial transcript to the application. Our students who have been admitted have averaged between a 3.0 and a 3.5 or higher on a 4.0 U.S. scale. So if you've earned now, so so if you've earned a transcript from a school outside the United States that is not on a 4.0 GPA scale, you will need to get your transcript evaluated. Pepperdine encourages the use of WEST, which is World Evaluation Services and you can find that link on our website. Uh, and I would say if you have, if, if it, I would say if your transcript is not in a 4.0 US GPA scale, get it evaluated. That takes, getting your transcript evaluated takes a few weeks. And so if you, so that's something to keep in mind if you're trying to apply by a deadline. It will, it will delay the process in your application until you, re, until we receive that. So here's the, here's the slide that will answer that question, that last question that, that was mentioned. Here is our tuition and fee structure. Um, on this chart, you, you can see that we also listed our, our five full-time master's programs. And so that's and it's just a way to compare uh, what, what, the tuition, what the tuition is and what the scholarship opportunities are as well, which I will discuss on this slide. So what you see with our MBA program, you see the duration and you see the cost. We charge for our full-time programs a flat rate per term. And so that flat rate right now is approximately, is, is just under $25,000 per term. That will go up every year. It's going to go up at least 2 to 3% tuition increase every year, and that's something you will find at any school in the United States. Tuition will increase at a 2 to 3% rate. So that's what you see. So if I would say by the time you're thinking about applying, tuition for our MBA program, particularly our 20-month program, will be over $100,000 US dollars. And then you can see it breaks down uh, so on and so forth for our master's programs. So when it comes to scholarships, the, the good thing about the MBA program is that we can offer merit-based scholarships up to full tuition for our programs. Now, when it comes to the scholarship, the main thing that, that our admission office looks at and our financial aid office looks at is your GMAT or your GRE score. So, again, that's one of the main reasons why the GMAT or the GRE is required. That is the number one criteria that is looked at for scholarships. So the higher your score, the more tuition money you receive. So again, you may not want, you know, if you don't have a 640 on a GMAT, it's, you know, you can still be admitted, but you may not receive full tuition scholarship without it. So that's something to keep in mind. Each program does require uh, an enrollment deposit. So if you are admitted to our program, you would need to pay one thousand u s dollars to confirm your enrollment in our program, and that is non refundable All right, so we've talked about all of the application uh all the application documents, and so what would be the next step? So when you feel that your application is ready to be submitted? 
you submit it. Submit all application, pay the application fee, uh, and you submit it by the deadline. So if there's anyone on this presentation who is looking to attend Pepperdine Business School for fall 2018, for August, the, the deadline for our international students was April 1st. And so I would say, you know, since it's three weeks past, you know, it's a slim it's a slim chance to be honest. But if you have everything ready to submit, we still may have spots available. So I would say, get it in. But but again, when there's things like your GMAT score and there's there's things like your transcript evaluation that can take multiple weeks, I would say you would just you would be better waiting for the next year, because you will not get a decision in time. And I'm thinking. When I say getting a decision in time, I'm thinking about if you, everything you need to do to get a secure a visa to get to this to get to this country to study. That would be the thing that takes another six weeks to get. So that's why the deadline for international students was April first. But normally, that's what that what would go that's what goes into submitting our application. Our next deadline for fall 2019. Our first deadline is November 1st, and so I would say that would be your next course of action, getting everything ready for November 1st. So when your application is under review, the admission, the admission committee, they, what, the first thing that happens is the admission office, they will review your application, your submitted application, to make sure it's complete. So that means they need to have the official GMAT or GRE score sent directly from the testing company, which takes can take two to three weeks as well. They need to have your transcript evaluation and your unofficial transcript. If it's not in English, it needs to be translated. It needs to be certified, everything that we discussed. Everything needs to be complete before your application is, is moved to review by the admission committee. That decision can take a few weeks. It can take a few weeks. Uh, I know for MBA, it's taken at least five weeks this year. And so when it comes to checking on your application status, this is something where you can, we welcome you to contact the admission office. And that's something that once you reach out to someone like me, I will give you that information. It's also on our website. Um, you can also contact uh, the recruitment team, which would be myself or my colleagues, um, and we can gladly pass you on to the admission office because we do not process the application. I have no hand in processing your application once you've submitted it. I can't see what you've submitted. I can't give you any insight. I can't give you insight on how long, where, you, where your application is on the admissions decision process. And once they've submitted a decision, I can't give you that decision until you, you know, I can't give that to you. The admission office gives you that. And so with that, that brings us to the that brings us to the end of my presentation. And so even though we are we are past the deadline for you, I encourage you to start working on your application whenever you can. You can still go in and start an application so that you can get an idea of what it looks like. But I encourage you to reach out to us anytime. And on our next slide, which is the last slide, you will see our you will see our contact information. So there's our phone number. Um, there's our email address. I know it's late in India, but we're just getting to work. And so if you have questions, you could once once you're done with this presentation, you could call this number tonight for you, and, and someone will be ready in our office now to answer that call. And you see our website, our email address, which is down there. So now I will open it up to any additional questions that we have. Thanks, Travis, for sharing all the program details with everyone. We have Sanju here who has missed out the tuition and fee structure of this program. Can you repeat this thing for him again? Yes, I sure can. Give me a second while I bring that slide back up. All right. And so I'm waiting. There we go. So. So here is the fee structure. Now, what, and, and I hope I'm getting the question all the way because 
there's, there's additional information when it comes to how to pay and when to pay, and I think that's something, it's on our website, but I think that's something that if this person is wanting to know that, I think that's a question for that usually admitted students want to know. And so if this person is an admitted student to the program, congratulations and get in touch with us so we can get you that information. But generally, here is our tuition and fee structure. Uh, this is just a tuition. This does not go into any additional fees that, that one may need, such as books. And, and paying for books will vary by 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 program and by you know by program and by school. Uh, this does not go into living arrangements, which can vary based on whether you're living on campus or off campus. We do have some on campus housing opportunities that will that can that they, they charge at least seven thousand dollars per term. Uh, but if you're living in an apartment around campus or in the Los Angeles area, that can go anywhere from, uh, it, can, it can start at about $1,500 per month. And so that's something to keep in mind. Um, at, you know, as, you, as you're thinking about how much it costs to, like the total cost when it comes to coming to and living in the Los Angeles area and attending a school there. Those are some of the costs that go into it. So, this slide mainly represents tuition, but there are other costs that you may have. There is a student activity fee, which is about fifty dollars. That is, I think, is charged per per tri per term, and so that's something else to keep in mind. But your biggest cost will will be here, and of course, it, it will be reduced if you're able to get a scholarship. Thanks, Chavez, for sharing the details again with everyone. We have Pradesh here who wants to know more about work visa after the program completion. And does the restriction by President Trump affect the Indian students in any way? What is the which program affects students? wants to know more about the work visa after the program completion and also does the restriction by President Trump affect Indian students in any way? <laughs> my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, <laughs> I, I apologize for laughing because I promise you many of us are shaking our heads at what uh, the President of the United States is doing here. Um, that's a hard question to answer, honestly. Because uh, you all, you know, for those of you who see the news like we do, he, uh, the president does not, he doesn't, he doesn't do things the way the, the previous presidents have done it. And so while I could say right now I haven't seen anything as far as restrictions that affect students coming from India, uh, <laughs> that is subject to change on a whim whenever the president wants to change it uh, because he is doing things on a different path than previous presidents have done it. And so, <laughs> so you know, I, I apologize. That is a tough question to, to address because, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, while I think it's all, it can be safely said at any point that none of us on a citizen level can affect what the president does, that is never a truer statement than it is right now. We have uh, president. The current president has made it clear through his words and his actions that he does whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it. And so, again, I haven't seen any anything in his policies that would affect students coming from India. But I think I think I think the big concern would be probably where this question is leaning toward is how easy would it be or what, how difficult would it be for a student once they have finished their degree to remain in this country to work? Now, something that's not in the presentation is for interna international students, there is what we call our optional practical training, our OPT. And for the MBA program, it is a 12 month, it's 12 months. You would need to apply for that 
and complete the paperwork for that, and that's something that happens with our International Student Services Office. And that's information that, again, would be given to you if you are offered admission after you submit it. We would give you information to connect with our International Student Services Office. And then that's a conversation you have with them. Because I'm not an international-based student, I am unfamiliar with any of that, the visa terminology that you would need. But we do have experts on our campus that can handle that. Um, but, but I think also another part of that is whether you're talking about President Trump or not, um, companies, it is at the company's discretion once you finish your degree whether or not they want to extend uh, an international student's opportunity to work in this country. Uh, and they, ha they have that opportunity. We actually have two, two of my colleagues are, are from China. They were born and raised in China. They earned their degree at Pepperdine, and they're working with me on the recruitment team for our master's programs. And that's a concern they have, too, uh, you know, as far as getting, getting their visa renewed so that they can remain in this country. And so, again, I don't think there's any uh, – I haven't seen any restrictions from the president that are targeting students from India, but that could change <laughs> whatever he wants it to change. That, that was a difficult one for you, Travis. Thanks, thanks for sharing your opinion with everyone. Uh, we have Pankaj over here who has completed his post-graduation from India and want to do MBA again. Will it be possible to do MBA from Pepperdine University? I, you know, this, when I get questions like this, and I mean, I, I appreciate the questions, I always recommend for anyone to, uh, who has questions like this to reach out to us individually. Uh, because it's hard for someone like me who, one, does not, does not make any decisions on who gets admitted to Pepperdine and who doesn't. I have no say in that. Uh, but what I can do is look at anyone's uh, materials, like a resume, usually, which is probably the most helpful, getting a resume and having a conversation with prospects about whether or not they're taking the GMAT or the GRE, what that score may be, what their academic performance looks like, and then we could have a conversation on your probability of being admitted. Uh, but I, I always, I always don't want to get into a situation where I'm saying someone, based on like, a, like even if I could see the question, or whatever, based on what I'm saying, you can get in, you can't get in, because I don't get to make that decision at all. Uh, at Pepperdine University. The admissions committee is cons consists solely of faculty members, which is a different different from any other school, or different from most schools that you would find in the United States. And so, uh, I'm not faculty, and so only faculty get to make that decision. And so, I can't without seeing anything. I can't even give a recommendation. I would recommend for this person with the question and anyone else to reach out, and that's why I put the slide back up with our information, reach out to us and we can set up a time to speak via, or we can do it over email, it doesn't matter, but we can set up a time to speak and talk about your chances of possibly being admitted to Pepperdine Grazadillo Business School. Hope that answers your question, Pankaj. We have one more question. Does any other internship of other degree, such as chartered accountant, Count as work experience? At Pepperdine Grazadillo, the internship, if, it's, if you're doing an internship while you're in school, it does not count as work experience. It, now, if you're, let's say, and, and of course, all these terms mean something different. Let's say you earned a degree, you have a bachelor's degree, and you don't have a full time. You know, no one has offered you a permanent position, but let's say they say, well, you have a degree. We don't have a full-time position, but we have an internship. If it's, be, if it's past your, your undergraduate degree, that can count. But if you're, taking, if, you're in, if you're in undergraduate degree right now and you're working a, an internship, that they will, the admissions committee will not look at that as work experience. Work experience for them means anything that happens beyond 
your after you've earned your bachelor's degree? So we have one more question. Is there any placement services which are provided to Indian students after completing MBA from this university? They have, we have, if I'm answering the question right, uh, can you repeat that one more time so I make sure I answer it right? So we have Pankaj over here who wants to know, is there any placement services which are provided to Indian students after, gotcha. com after the program completion? Thank you. I thought I heard that right. So I'm a, let, me, let me pull up my slide again, um, just so you get a, just for a visual. And I'll bring this back before we end the call, Gurpreet. But let me pull up my uh, career slide again, just to show you, just to give you all a visual. And I might just kind of swing through them a little bit. So. Just to give you, you know, so here are the companies that we work with. Here are the companies where we have many alumni who are at these companies and we work with them to host networking events. And, you know, not only do, there, do our alumni come back from these companies to do events for our current students, but we also do treks with these students, uh, with our current students, and take them on location to many of these companies. And the next slide again, the top companies uh, for Pepperdine alumni, where many of our alumni are working in Southern California and across the United States. Now, having said all of that, our career center does not place students. So I want to be clear with that. Our career center does not place students. What our career center does is give you the opportunity, as I move back to that slide, they give you the opportunity and the skills to network on your, on your own. Now, having said that, we do have opportunities on our website. We do post jobs from companies with the companies that, as I move back one more time, uh, from these companies, these are some of our employer partners, and they do have access to our career portal. And they will post jobs and they will post opportunities uh, for our MBA program. If you're doing 20 months, you will need an internship. They will post these opportunities on our website for you to see. But it is still up to you as a student to apply to those opportunities. It is up to you as a student to interview for those opportunities. And it's up to you as a student to work your way through finding the opportunity. The Career Management Center or the, what, the Career Center, they're going to help guide you through that process. But there is not, let's say, we have, let's say we have 100 MBA students. We do not have a list of 100 jobs, and we're just going to say, you automatically go pre, you know, you're ready for, you know, you're in finance, so we're going to put you, go pre, in a finance position. That will not happen. What will happen is, and I'm using go pre as an example, go pre if you're interested in finance, they can show you here's some here's some positions in the financial industry that may interest you and go on our website and apply for these jobs you have to do the work as a student but our career center will guide you and they will be there to help you every step of the way that's that individualized attention that i mentioned at the beginning they will give you that attention and give you the tools and help you in some strategies but you still have to apply and you still have to land the job Thanks, Travis, for answering that question. Uh, we're going to take this final question before we end this session. We have Jyoti over here who says she has 3.4 years of working experience and has done BTEC in chemical engineering. She wants to know, can she do MBA from your university and is she eligible for scholarship? Um. And, I, you know, just going back to, I think, one of the questions I said before, I would encourage uh, that person to reach out to me individually. I will not, on the phone, try to guarantee anyone um, the opportunity to be admitted or to get scholarship because I do not play a role in deciding that. We have an admissions committee that 
decides whether or not someone is admitted, and we have the financial aid office that will look at scholarship, uh, will determine scholarships. So I can, I don't mind looking, working with the student to look at the materials they show me, which would be a resume, um, you know, let me know what their scores are, GMAT or GRE, and letting me know, you know, and if they have a transcript that that I can that that is that I can read and shows me what their GPA is on a U.S. scale, I can I can help prognosticate what I think their chances are. But since I have no role in those decisions, I will not I will not go out and tell anyone. Yes, you will be admitted to Pepperdine, and yes, you will get a full scholarship because I do not play a role in any of those decisions. But I will talk with anyone who is in, who wants to know what their opportunities are. Now, based on what you just read out, Gurpreet, I, you know, I think that anyone with an engineering background, you, engineers have a great chance to be admitted to any MBA program because there's a lot of quantitative, there's a big quantitative aspect to an MBA program, a lot of math involved, and who better than engineers to, to work through those opportunities? Engineers are very successful in MBA programs in the experience that I have had. So I would say just based on that, I think this person has a good chance, but I can't say with certainty that this person would get into Pepperdine, and I can't say with certainty how much the scholarship would be. Thanks for answering put, that, Travis. Uh, real quick, uh, yeah. I know we're about to wrap up. Uh, real quick, I just I put up the screen once again with our information. So uh, as we're starting to wrap up, everyone, I thank you for joining. Uh, let me speak to you this evening for you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us with our contact information down below. With this, we are going to end this webinar. Thank you, everyone, for attending this webinar. Thank you, Travis, for your valuable time and answering all the queries. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.